attend McAllen ISD. And even if they don't, even if you're not from McAllen, you're not going to want to miss this segment because... Because I'm pretty sure your district has an IB program. And we'll be talking about that because McAllen School District decided to drop full scale the IB program. And we're going to talk to the interim superintendent, Jay Gonzalez, about this topic. But first, we have to tell you that this hour of the Drive Home with Davis Rankin and Roxanne Garcia is brought to you by Norman's Air Conditioning. Call them at 546 7406. That's 956 956- Five four six seventy four zero six Norman's AC. They'll keep you cool. <laughs> Called a live announce. <laughs> you know they used to have they used to have announcers when I was at CBS as a desk assistant, and and they had a live guy to sit there. That's what they got paid to do was sit there. Well, I don't know if they're paying Mr. Gonzalez to sit there, they're so we're gonna him, have to get to him ASAP. They're paying him <laughs> amply. Plus, he has a car allowance. Uh, Jose Gonzalez is the interim superintendent at the McAllen Independent School District. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. We want to talk about the International Baccalaureate Program at McAllen. The school board voted at the end of m- March to to cut it back, uh, I guess, significantly. Before we go any further, I think we need a definition of terms. Also, is, is McAllen the only school district which has an IB uh, program? And then what is it? Well, it, we're not the only district that has an IB program. There, there are a number of school districts uh, in the state that, that do. It is a, a world-renowned uh, system, mm. I guess, where it, it enriches uh, schools' established curriculums. Now, I wanted to ask you, I'm, I'm glad you said that because one of my questions was, where did this program initially come from? It really happened overseas uh, in the 60s where they were trying to come up with a standardized uh, curriculum that had standards that made uh, the learning experience rich for the learners. So they, they really focused on more like community service aspects of learning, health and social education, the environment, human ingenuity, mm-hmm. things of that sort, along with the actual subjects that were being taught. So that's how it differs from regular curriculum. They're learning a little bit more about other things. Absolutely. So so in Texas, we have the Texas Essential of Knowledge and Skills. That's the state curriculum that all schools must teach. And what the IB does is it takes that established curriculum and it gives you a framework to enrich it. Enrich it in what way, though? Well, if you look at it from the psychosocial perspective or from the emotional intelligence perspective, one of the things that the IB brings to the table is it pushes the importance of being open-minded and caring and being a risk taker and balanced and and to inquire and to gain knowledge and and teachers drive that through the curriculum on a daily basis. So that's one way is is really to to create a, a situation where students aren't just learning content, but they're learning how that content applies to the world. I th- I thought I thought the IB program was uh, was just a more rigorous well because you, know, you have to wonder how other people define things but I'm thinking of a, a an academically more rigorous mm-hmm. curriculum. My oldest son tried it for a while, but it it was too much pressure. He wanted to go play football at Mac High as well. But I've had other kids say, no, there's just too much too much drudges. I just don't want to work that hard. Right, and, and and I see where you're coming from because when you think about the IB, there's what we call the PYP, that's the primary year program, and that's elementary. Then you have the middle year program, and that runs 6th, 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th grade. What your son was experiencing was the ninth and 10th grade and potentially the diploma year program. Now, the diploma year program is the 11th and 12th grade program, and that is more rigorous where students have to do extended essays, where they have to do personal projects, where teachers really do bring a a level of rigor to the table that that is extensive. But it's much like the advanced placement, the AP courses at the conventional, Mm -hmm. at their comprehensive high schools. They, they, They bring rigor to the table, too. It's just there's some additional requirements needed when you get to the diploma year program. That's what your son was experiencing. The Ivy program starts in elementary. Yes, ma'am. So would that replace a GT? Because remember when I was in elementary, we had GT classes. Why don't we find out how many different uh, curricula, plural of curriculum, there are? See, my three years of Latin paid off. (laughs) (laughs) With regard to with regard to the state curriculum, that would be the TEKS that everybody within the state of Texas has to deliver the Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills because that's what the STAR test is going to be testing. Now, as far as does GT still exist, yes, there are GT students within the IB environment. It does exist. 
Gifted and Talented was was a place where they sent uh, academically more uh, r- more smarter. studious, <laughs> smarter. I'm trying smarter to say smarter kids. The smarter well, kids of uh, that the, worked harder. The drones, the drudges, the <laughs> grinds. Well, that's where they. Uh, uh, every everybody's some kind of smart, and everybody's gifted in different ways. I... But from an advanced academics perspective, students come in and they're identified as gifted, and once they're identified as gifted, then they're put into a particular class with other students that, that uh, have met that threshold, mm-hmm. and uh, they are challenged at higher levels. So that, that's really the gifted and talented program, but that exists within the IB environment. IB does not replace the, our GT program. So there still is a GT program? Yeah. And an, uh, yes. Well, right. joining us on 710 KURV is McKellen ISD Superim Interintendent Jay Gonzalez. Now, the, the reason we're talking to you is because MISD is <laughs> dropping the IB program. So we started off talking about what it was or making changes. So we started off what it was. So why the changes now? One of the things that we looked at, and and, and we didn't drop the program, we just scaled back. We originally had, uh, our vision was to go to scale and have all seven middle schools be MYP or middle year programs and all Mm -hmm. 20 elementary schools be primary year programs. But as we moved into as we move further into to the endeavor, we realize that uh, taking it to scale pr- produced some challenges with regard to what we were trying to do within all of our schools. So we wanted to create an environment where we had different choices, where IB wasn't the only choice. But because we understand the benefits and we do know that, that IB brings something special to the table, we left three of our elementary schools as IB schools and one of our middle schools, and then we kept the diploma year program at Lamar. You know, I can I can see high schoolers wanting you know, a more rigorous, more you rigorous know, curriculum. Hold on, I'm sorry for interrupting you, Davis. I want to know, no, Mr. Gonzalez. No, you're okay, not. I'm sorry not. for interrupting. Um, <laughs> do you guys follow these students, these IB students, good, after graduation? Because to me, I was never an IB student, and it, it's not about. It's 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 also what you do after high school that really counts. What college you go to, or how much you apply yourself in college. Because I was reading um, some stories about the IB program and how it came from like the UN and how it's it kind of has a leftist you agenda. Such a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm w- talking to him it's about the to be IB a program. Swiss, <laughs> Swiss based thing, right? No, go so ahead. We we do follow our, our students just in general. We we uh, we want to know how our students are are doing. So there's there's a uh, data that we can look into with regard to our school report card or what they call the taper report. And this report gives us information with regard to our percentage of graduates and our percentage of, of students that are going to school, uh, to colleges. But as far as tracking them to see their success over time, we haven't looked at mm-hmm. that. But we do know that students that graduate from the diploma year program do have the tendency to go to colleges. I mean, yeah. that, that's really what they're geared toward. I mean, the so, students are, are focused. I'm yeah. so confused. Those kids aren't studying real hard to go join the Navy. Well, because you have you have early college, you have you have dual enrollment, and then you have IB. So at the end of the day, they're all leading well, for the same thing is for students to go to college. Right. I think Rock- and that's, we're, we're trying to create an environment where students have choice, as you mentioned, because I, I may be in a situation where early college high school is the best fit for me, and it's a great school. It's a National Blue Ribbon School. Or I may want to go to the diploma year program because that's something that I uh, aspire to to, yeah. to go toward. But sometimes a comprehensive high school is, is the place to be because I want to be closer to athletics and fine mm-hmm. arts and in the comprehensive experience of, of what high school is all about. So we mm-hmm. want to give our students opportunities. And we also want to create a situation where our teachers also have choice with regard to where they uh, feel most comfortable teaching. Does it also have to include how, depending on what college you want to go to, sometimes different universities... <laughs> require either IB or early college or dual enrollment? Not necessarily. We believe that all of our all of our choices will get you to an environment where you would be ready for a four-year college or, you know, some students mm-hmm. choose to go for a two-year associate's degree or some want to go for a license or a certificate. It just depends what, what our students are looking at. But whether you go to, let's say, for example, McAllen High School and go through the AP program or, or the diploma year program or achieve, we believe that we're preparing you for any college. My word, I wish I had these options when I was can, in high school. Can you hang on first? I'll, I have Absolutely. a question for you, but I think it's going to take a little more time. Okay. We'll, we'll pause for a second. Then the question, you may ponder it in the break, is 
geez, oh, Pete, how many different career, I mean, study tracks are there? See, I phrased that in a real hostile way. But when I was a kid, it was regular, advanced placement, mm-hmm. and there was one other. And advanced, my kids kept complaining about how hard advanced placement was. It was. Said, it wasn't that hard. Well, it's not the same advanced placement. That's, uh, our guest is uh, Interim McAllen Superintendent, uh, Jay sorry, Gonzalez. Jay Gonzalez, Jose Gonzalez. We're not calling him Jay. Jose Gonzalez in McAllen talking about the uh, International Baccalaureate Program and education in general. In late March, the McAllen School Board on a vote of 5-2 to two with trustees Danny Vela and Larry Esparza voting no, uh, the school board voted to cut back the International Baccalaureate Program from, it says here, the 27 uh, of its schools. They cut it back to uh, just a few. Three elementary schools will keep the program and a couple of middle schools. Uh, and De- just Lamar. De Leon and Lamar Academy. Huh, I went to De Leon. And Lamar Academy... Dr. Gonzalez is where, that's where the high schoolers go, isn't it? Dr. Gonzalez? Dr. Jose Gonzalez? Sir, that is correct. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, we've lost him. No, no. <laughs> he fell into a digital hole. Uh, I was, uh, I, I will confess, uh, I heard from teachers. Of course, teachers are often never happy, but I, that is I was not true. I was told that there was a lot of unhappiness with amongst teachers about how much the program cost. And I noticed that by cutting back, you all will go from spending about $900,000 a year for the right to use the curriculum and, and uh, testing, I think some testing expenses, uh, training teachers back now, to about 300,000 or something. Well, well right? part of, part, part of it, I guess it's a yes and a no, because although we're cutting back on spending for IB training, we still have, uh, uh, I guess, an obligation to create an environment where students are still going to be challenged. And one of the areas that we're looking at focusing on is a STEAM program. And it, it's not necessarily a program. It's a philosophy that's being used across uh, the nation science. where we focus on science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So there's still going to be some training required there. So... Uh, I, I wouldn't say that we're going to save all of that money. I have so many questions for you, Dr. Gonzalez. Okay, one, I also want to know, does every district in Texas have the same IB program? Does e- every district that, that is authorized to be an IB uh, school uh, has the same program? But if they are not authorized, then then no. Okay, so we you, you didn't completely drop the IB program. You made changes. So only certain schools have them. Now, I know that we go to schools based on where we live. Now, if if I wanted to take my f- kid to that school, but I'm not in that in that area, would that be okay? That would be okay. Yes. How many different cur- how many different curricula are there? Because I I'm a, a little confused, but uh, but there's just a, a lot a lot more different ways to go through school now than there used to be. Wouldn't that make things more complicated? Right. Well, well, as far as the the state curriculum. Again, that that's based on the TEKS. Every school district in the state of Texas has to follow the TEKS, and every content area that's tested follows that curriculum. So that's that. But as far as how you enrich that, mm-hmm. as far as how you take the TEKS, for example, in science, and you enrich that experience for students, then there's different ways to do that, IB being one and STEAM being another, where you where you really focus on, on the engineering aspect of it or where you bring in the robotics and the coding and the, the drones and, and maybe uh, things in the area of medicine and things of that sort. So there's different ways to enrich the student's experience. Uh, and STEAM is S-T-E-A-M, and it's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. That is correct. So it's pretty heavy, uh, pretty heavy science and technology. Um, Curriculum, but there's there's gifted and talented. There was regular when like again again when I went it was regular mm-hmm. college prep and I forget what the other one was. But there weren't what, that many different ways. To, what it what it is now at the high school level, you'll have a, a standard plan, mm-hmm. you'll have a a CP or what they call the college prep, and then you'll have the distinguished achievement plan, the DAEP. So there's those are the plans that students choose when they get to their freshman year. But there's also endorsements. There's there's pathways now that students select as they're moving into high school. They'll select whether they want to pursue the public service endorsement or the business and industry endorsement or the science, technology, engineering, and math endorsement or a multidisciplinary endorsement or an art and humanities endorsement. So there's different approaches and different endorsements. There's five that students choose, and then it takes them along a, a specific path toward graduation. 
man, a lot of information. It's complex. (laughs) It It is. It is complex, but. But uh, we're confident that in McAllen ISD, we're, we're providing our, our students with a, with a world-class education and preparing them uh, regardless of what career track they choose or what graduation plan they choose. Dr. Gonzalez, before we go, is there anything or what, what changes are coming next, if any? What's next for the IB program? And is there anything you, you, we didn't get to ask you that you want to say? Well, we're excited. We're excited about the fact that uh, we are still going to offer the IB program at uh, Perez and Alvarez and Roosevelt Elementaries. We're excited about the fact that De Leon Middle School will be our middle year program with regard to IB and that Lamar will com- continue to be a, a driving force with regard to how we're educating our, our students in the IB world. Now, we're also excited about the fact that we are we are bringing STEAM to the table. And in McAllen, we're looking at calling calling it STEAM+. Plus. So we're looking at beyond just the STEAM, how are we going to bring in the emotional intelligence side of it? How are we going to bring in the critical thinking and creativity along with social and global perspectives and communication and digital and technological fluency and all the things that go into rounding out a child? But we also bring great fine arts. We bring great athletics. We have world-class teachers. And if you haven't uh, thought about McAllen ISD as a district of choice, we, we hope that if you're listening that you do. All right, it's going to get steamier at McAllen. Yes, I, can I, hope, I hope you're enjoying your time as interim superintendent. I'm as well. loving it. It's a great district. I've been here for 18 years, and uh, it's my family, and, and, and I love McAllen. And I love McAllen. ISD. We'll be talking to you soon, Dr. Gonzalez. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. You too. It's uh, 431 on 710K URV, the drive home. You're listening to 710K.
WRV.